today is actually the seventh part of this uh, series. We titled it Word View, okay? And uh, again, for the past six weeks, okay, today is the seventh week, week, but for the past six weeks, we have been talking about the Bible, why the Bible is important to us, what is the Bible, and why should we read it, and all of those things. And hopefully, okay. Um, I always say hopefully, no? Binibilang niyo ba yung hopefully ko? I know you, some of you are counting hopefully, okay? Uh, I pray, oh, binago ko na, alright? I pray that, you know, for the sermons or messages that you've been hearing for the past six weeks, uh, we're hoping, uh, we as preachers, we as pastors, you know, you've been attending here, maybe some of you, this is your first time, um, hopefully this has been changing the way you see God's word. Hopefully, this has been changing the way you read God's word, and maybe hope. We're hoping that whenever you open this scripture, who among you here you've been reading the Bible so far? Okay, so far, so good. Okay, who among you here you've been reading now? Now you have changed. You've been reading the, this uh, Bible every day now, every day. Okay, improving. All right, two minutes. Okay, five minutes long. All right, okay. Ibati wala na nagtataas ng kamay, parang uh, wala na pastor. Okay, we're not doing it. Anyways, but again, okay, again, for the past six weeks, we've been talking about the scripture and we've been talking about hopefully this Bible that we hold and that we read will be the worldview or so to speak, the lens to which we see our lives, the way we do our lives here on earth. And again, um, we're, again, for, for some of you here, maybe you felt like this, uh, this thing has been, uh, I mean, reading the scripture has been a, a dry thing for you, but hopefully, uh, as you have been, as you have been reading and hearing us, uh, this has helped you a lot, rejuvenate again the way you read God's word. But again, just like you and me, okay, tell your neighbor, you are only human, okay? Tell your neighbor, you're only human, okay? All right, okay, tama naman yun. We're only human, okay? Uh, born to make mistakes, okay? That's the song, all right? But anyways, no, that's not true. But um, who among you can relate with me? I mean, for the past weeks, we've been talking about the scripture is reliable, the scripture is authoritative, the scripture is uh, really, really important to us. Yes, okay? And you know, some of you, you got it. Wow, because of that, you researched the word and you read the word from cover to cover. Wow, really? Okay. But among you, you, you felt this at one point, or maybe for many times, whenever you read this book, you feel like you cannot understand it. Isn't it true? Okay, all, all of us. Okay. It's not because it's English. Okay, I know that. I understand that. Tinatamaan din ako noon. Parang, wow. All right. So it's not because it's English, it's in, in another translation. It's just that most of us, isn't it true? Uh, if you've been a Christian for quite some time, you've been reading God's Word. You've been scanning, and you know, there, there might be some verses, you know, when you read it, it was, wow, okay, I got it. But for many times, whenever you wake up in the morning, usually you read the Bible in the morning, or maybe evening, okay, it's an effective tool to sleep. <laughs> Sabi nila, okay, some of them are saying that. But, you know, whenever you read this word, who among you, you felt that tension, you felt that feeling. You read it, you read the story of David, na, 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 and then, okay, that's it, thank you, Lord. Ding, I read the word today. And sometimes this is the tension that we feel every time we open the scripture. Why is it difficult for me? I'm including myself here. Why is it difficult for me, and maybe for you, um, to understand the Bible? Why is it that whenever we open the scripture, we find it difficult to understand it and maybe because of that difficulty some of you you disengaged in reading God's word some of you some of you you have disengaged meaning uh, maybe yeah I'm just reading this because my pastor told me or my victory group told me uh, victory group leader who among you here you're involved in a victory group today come on now all right who among you here you're happy you're proud you're proud of, part of a victory group come on now Okay, okay, I, I, I know some of you here are just attending. Okay, that's fine. We will hopefully, along the way, you'll be a part of what we call Victory Group. But, you know, maybe you're forced to read this, but again, you feel that tension. Why is it so difficult for me to understand this? And you get disengaged with reading God's Word, and along the way, you lost interest, and along the way, you just put it aside and say, you know, I'm, I'm busy now, Pastor. You don't understand. 
Laksian. Laging ganun, di ba? Pastor, you don't understand what I'm going through. So don't push me to read the Bible every day and all of those things. But maybe for some of you, you have given up. You have given up reading the Bible, not just because of understanding, but because, you know, issues of understanding, but because of some things that maybe you have read in the Scripture and it has offended you. Maybe this word that you're going to hear today is something that would, might be a turning point for each and every one of us. And again, again, the tension that we feel is why is it so difficult for us to understand the Scripture? You know, there's a theology that says the, the clarity of Scripture, meaning it says that the, the Bible is, so to speak, clear. Actually, one of the famous theologians, uh, he wrote the systematic theology. His name is Wayne Grudem. Sabi niya ron, he, he says, he wrote it in his book. He says that the clarity of Scripture means this, that the Bible is written in such a way that its teachings are available to be understood by all who will read it, it's available to be understood, okay? Or it's able, it's, the teachings are able to be understood by all who read it. And when we say all, it means sabihin, it means lahat, okay? Or all, okay? It means everyone, okay? But here's the clincher. All who read it, seeking God's help and being willing to follow it. So there's a qualifier there by the theologian Wayne Grudem. But then I ask this question, okay, if the Bible is clear when it comes to the essentials, and you know what, what uh, Wayne Grudem was talking about here is that when it comes to the essential things of the Word, when it comes to salvation, when it comes to the love of God, when it comes to the grace of God, when it comes to the redemption of man, and all of these big, so to speak, topics in the Scripture, am I talking too fast? Not really. Chill, okay? When it comes to all of these things, the Bible is, so to speak, clear. But, Okay, then I start thinking about this. If the Bible is clear when it comes to these things, have you ever tried, okay, you know, you want to share the gospel to, the, to this person, this is your schoolmate or your office mate. Okay, the Bible is clear when it comes to the issues of salvation and all these things. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to give the Bible to that person and you know, you, you tell that, that, that friend of yours, you say, just read this Bible and you'll get saved. Well, among you, you got saved on your own, okay, by just reading the Bible. Maybe there's some, okay. Actually, uh, uh, I, I know somebody, okay, who got saved because of a flyer. How many you here, you, you, you understand what a flyer is, okay? Flyer, yung lumilipad, flyer. Okay, no, just kidding. But flyer, uh, there's a verse there. She read it, you know, she received the Lord Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior, plug in in the, in, in the church, and that's it. But for many of us here, isn't it true? The Bible, as the theologian is saying, it's clear enough, but you don't just give it to somebody and say, okay, just read it and you'll get saved. We didn't get God saved, so to speak, through that. But what is stopping us from understanding the Word of God? Is it, is it just the lack of understanding? Is it just language? Is it just the lack of knowledge, so to speak? Or maybe there's something there. Maybe the question that we have to answer right now is how can we now understand the Bible Clearly, because we always said this is important. This is something that should guide, should lead your life. We are asking God, lead my life. God, we want to know your will. But when we read God's word, huh? Okay. We always go back and say, God, I don't understand this. Maybe tomorrow, makajakpat ako, or maybe tomorrow I'll get it. But why is it difficult for us to understand? That is a big, big problem that we face every single day. But today, is a turning point for many of us today. And hopefully, uh, this will be a big, big solution for, for the issues that we face whenever we read God's Word. So if you have your Bibles with you, God has something to say in 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 2. I'll be reading at verse 10 to verse 16. So if you have your Bibles with you, um, if you brought your Bibles, okay, just open it there. 1 Corinthians is actually in the New Testament, okay? Or if you, okay, yung iba dito nakatingin sa akin. I won't show the verse, okay? I won't show, sorry, I won't show the verse so that I will help you somehow bring your own Bible. But if you don't have a Bible today, just pretend you have one, okay? Just look down, okay? Look down lang, tingin, tingin lang, all right? Don't worry, you will have your own Bible until your Bible owns you. I, would like, I always like to repeat that. I'll be reading in verse 10 until verse 16. This is Paul writing to the church of Corinth. Verse 10 says there, These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths 
of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except the spirit of that person which is in him? So also, no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. Verse 12, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given us by God. Verse 13, okay? And we impart this in, the, in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit, interpreting spiritual truth to those who are spiritual. Verse 14, the natural person do not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly or foolishness, okay? Doesn't really mean anything to that person. And he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. In, un- in other translations, spiritually understood. 15, the spiritual person judges all things but is himself to be judged by no one. Last verse, for who has understood the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, again, we have heard and we have read your word. And we believe, God, whenever we hear and whenever we read God's word, your word, God, your power moves within us, in us, and through us. And today, God, I pray that your Holy Spirit will illuminate your word, will allow us, God, to, to see this word with, with meaning, God, and with power, God, that changes every one of us. God, I pray that, Lord, you will remove, uh, remove any distractions, remove any worries and fears, God, that may be limiting the way we hear you, God. I pray that we will hear your voice today. In Jesus' name, <clears throat> amen, amen, amen. Okay, just, just to give you a quick background of the of the church in Corinth the Corinth is a city actually it's a very progressive city in the times of the Roman Empire and um, that city is actually the center so to speak of commerce so it has it, it has a lot of money so to speak in that uh, in that city uh, but also you will find in that city if you would research this in in your world history Corinth is known for its immor um, immorality so, so to speak because they have there the temple of Aphrodite which is the goddess of love okay and for them um, you know sexual immorality is a form of worship okay that's how that's how immoral so to speak that that city is and so Paul went there sh- shared the gospel some people got saved the church okay the church happened so imagine that okay so we we do not give up to any cities here in this world Kahit pa ka immoral yan, even that city even if that city is so immoral when the when the gospel is preached a church can actually stand and so at that point okay in in, in the context of Corinth so there there may be less than 100 people who uh, got baptized you know got into the church they know Jesus but if you maybe some of you you know this some of uh, the the church in Corinth is actually one of the so to speak most problematic churches that Paul planted because because of a lot of issues that Paul mentioned when he wrote first and second Corinthians there were issues about how they do worship you know worship here like how they do uh, congregational worship they uh, they apply spiritual gifts how they look at sexual immorality how they even look at communion okay we, you read that a while, you, you, we saw that a while ago it was in first Corinthians 11 okay they were talking about communion that was actually an issue then in their lives and there there's a lot of issues happening in the church kind of like your victory group right now okay victory group anyways uh, but, but maybe you can relate with that you know you have a group of people with a lot of issues that's normal uh, but that is where that is the starting point why Paul has written this letter to the church of Corinth because most of them heard the gospel most of them heard the messages of God and at that point there was no Bible yet the the writings the scriptures then are actually just verbal communications by the Apostles James John are still alive Peter are still alive Andrew is still alive all of those people who walk with Jesus are still alive so they knew all of these things but they have a misinterpretation of how it is applied and because of that misinterpretation it led them to a misapplication because maybe they saw the scripture, so to speak, as not clear. Maybe it's so ambiguous that that's why they misapplied it. That's why Paul wrote this letter and he said this. 
said this, these are the things, these are the things that God has revealed to us by His Spirit. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except their own spirit within them? And, he, and Paul understood, okay, Paul understood that, okay, he was saying to this Corinthian uh, church, okay, I think I know what's the problem in it. I think I, I got it. The, the reason why they're not getting it, it's not because of knowledge, it's not because they lack the, the, the words or they lack the, the hearing of the word of God, but I think they're missing something. And for us here, the reason why maybe, 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 whenever we open up the Bible, isn't it true? We're not getting it as well. Because Paul is about to say something here. For who knows a person's thoughts except their own spirit within them? He's saying, okay, let me just give you an example. And I think this is where the problem is. Okay. Who can know your thoughts? And Paul is saying, you, right? I cannot know your thoughts. Nobody can read their minds, okay? Unless maybe you're demonic, okay? But demonic talaga, no, just kidding. But, or maybe you have a gift of reading other people's minds. But if you don't have, usually in a normal sense, we can't read other people's minds. That's why married people, who among you here, you're married. That's where our problem comes from, right? Okay, we cannot read other people's mind. We ca I cannot read my wife's mind, okay? Sometimes I will say something to her and then, sasabihin ko ba? No, just kidding. No, no, no. I will say something to her and then she gets offended. You know, husband, can you relate with me? And then you'll ask, why? Why? Okay, why? Why are, you, why are you sad? Why are you mad? Why are you angry? Or why are you doing this? And then she will tell me, because you said this, you said that. And then, Husband, you know what we'll do, right? That's not what I meant. Isn't it true? That's not what I meant. That's not, that's not really. I might sound like it, but that's not really what I meant by what I said. And Paul is saying, okay, I think the problem is this. A person knows his thoughts, and here's the thing. In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. And he's saying this. Okay, I think the reason why we're not tapping in, we're not connecting whenever we read God's Word or whenever we hear it, we're not, I think the reason why we can't connect, so to speak, with the Word of God is because we're missing out on the Spirit of God. And I underline the word no because this is an important term. No in, in, in Greek means this, ginosko, okay, ginosko, okay? Uh, the word ginosko meant to, to know from a first-hand experience okay to know from a first-hand experience and Paul is saying you know what through the Spirit of God we get we have an understanding we have an appreciation we have we value the words of God and this is this is what what Paul is actually saying you know the Spirit of God clearly tells us the heart of God in the Word of God the Spirit of God clearly tells us the heart of God in the Word of God. Because sometimes, how among you, you felt it. Whenever you read God's Word, this is just a bunch of stories, right? And I'm not sure if these are all real. These are good lessons to tell. These are good lessons to understand. But you know what? Sometimes, without the Spirit of God, we will see this as a text. But it has no power to change our hearts. But unless we have the Spirit of God, in, and Paul was saying, unless we get it, not just by our own mind, but by the Spirit of God, then we can connect and know the thoughts of God. You know, for, for the first time people here, I have two kids, okay? I have two kids. Judah is four. Alonzo is uh, just turned three. And I always tell my kids every morning, every evening before they sleep, and also when they do something, you know, Matigas ulo, you know what I'm saying? How do you say that in English? Hard-headed. Okay, so hard-headed. Hard-headed, stubborn. Okay, stubborn. When they're stubborn, I always tell them, tell it to them every single day. Judah, Alonzo, Daddy loves you. And Daddy is proud of you. Daddy loves you and Daddy is proud of you. I always tell it to them because I want them to get me. I want them to know that I am clear to them that every single day, whatever they do, I love them and I am proud of them. And sometimes whenever I think about God and who God is into my life, and maybe to yours as well, He is our Heavenly Father. 
And Paul is saying, if the Spirit of God clearly tells us the heart of God in the Word of God, what does God, what would God tell us every single day whenever we read God's Word? Isn't it good to hear what our Heavenly Father would want to say to you every single day whenever you open up your Bible? And isn't it true? Most of us, every single day, what we want is just an encouragement. What we want is a sense of comfort. What we want is a sense of security. What we want is a sense of significance. And do you know that your Heavenly Father has been telling you it, these things through His Word? But maybe, maybe we're not getting it because we're missing on the Spirit of God. The question that we need to ask is this, are we, are we filled with God's Spirit? Am I filled with God's Spirit? When I open the Scripture, am I filled with God's Spirit? Then Paul continued. He said this, what we have received is not the Spirit of the world, meaning he's saying, you know, the things that we have received is not the philosophies of this world, it's not from, you know, it's not from the demons, it's not from all of these things, but the Spirit who is from God, they're saying the Spirit that they have is the Spirit, is the same Spirit that Jesus has so that they, so that we may understand, tell your neighbor, understand. Understand what God has freely given us. And you know what? Paul is not saying that nobody can understand this word if you don't have the Spirit of God. In fact, if you're an intellectual, you can read this and you can see uh, truths, values, history, and all of these things. But what Paul is saying is this. Apart from the Spirit of God, there is no appreciation, there is no understanding, there is no valuing of God's Word in our hearts. The sad, the sad point is this. You know, even if we attend church, it's possible, we always say this, it's possible that we attend church, we worship God, we sing, but our hearts are far away from the Lord. And maybe the reason why whenever we read God's Word, it's not because... We don't understand the language. But maybe because our hearts are far away from God. Let me just give you an example. Um, <clears throat> hello, test mic, okay? Let me just... <laughs> hello, okay. Let me just give you an example. Uh, some, of, some of the people that I, I know would question the Bible and say, what about the things that are not clearly called by the Bible as sin? Mm, have you ever encountered that question? What about Yossi? Okay, Yossi. Pinoy na Pinoy. What about cigarette? Is that bad? Okay. What about marijuana? Is that bad? What about this? Is this bad? What about gambling? Is that bad? Is that mentioned in the Bible? Yeah, yung mga ganun, di ba? What about, you know, I, and all of those, what about eating pork? Okay. What about, no, tinira naman mga baboy, di ba? What about eating dinugo? What about this? What about that? Okay. So we, we can debate you know, about all of those, so to speak, gray areas. What about drinking? What about those things? Okay. Let me just tell you this. Last week, we talked about the sufficiency of the word. The Bible is sufficient to speak to us about life and faith, wisdom and faith. Although it's not exhaustive, that it can answer all the questions that we have, but it is sufficient enough, so to speak, to lead us and guide us. The Bible might not be clear, so to speak, on the what is the sin right now for today. Like, for example, there's no internet in the Bible. Like, if I would check, you know, a porn site, there's no porn site in the Bible. Is that clear in the Bible? There's no, there's sexual immorality. You can actually, you know, you know go through the whole uh, word study of that. But if you would be technical on that, you know, we, we, people might reason out, there's no such thing as that in the Bible. But the but the Bible is clear about the disposition of our hearts when it comes to the gray areas of our lives. There are a lot of gray areas right now that we might, what about this, what about, what, what, what. but let me just give you an example of the scripture that Paul was also writing in the same letter, so to speak, that he was writing to the, book of, uh, to the church in Corinth. It says there, therefore, if what I eat causes my brother or sister to fall into sin, I will never eat meat again so that I will not cause them to fall. Is it bad to eat meat? That's the problem there. Is it bad to eat meat? Is that bad to, you know, this, this meat are, uh, you know, offered to idols and all of those things. But Paul is saying, if it causes someone to stumble, I will never do this. 
And in chapter 10, verse 31, Paul also mentioned, so whether you eat or drink or whatever, tell your neighbor, whatever, whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Do not cause anyone to stumble. The sin might not be clear in the Bible. You know, we can argue that. You know, what about that? what about gaming? Yeah, yung mga ano, diba? Yung mga single professionals and the students here. What about, you know, Mobile Legends, Dota, and all of these things? Okay, all right, chill, all right? I get you, okay? The question that we have to ask is this. As clearly as it is said in the scripture, will it make somebody stumble and fall? Will it honor God? Will it, make, will it hurt somebody? And will it honor and love God more? That's just it. The greatest command is this, to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength and to love your neighbor as yourself. Next week, we're going to talk about that more. The Bible might not be clear, but because the Spirit of God causes us to understand, then we see that and we say, ah. This is the point where, that when we read God's Word, we say, Ah, have you ever felt that you read God's word? Or not that you heard the pastor said it, but I hope that whenever you read this, you will also have this. Man, that's, that's powerful. Paul continued this, and this is the problem actually. The problem is our hearts, is our hearts are sinful and deceived. And my prayer is that the Holy Spirit will always convict us change the way we think. And Paul mentioned this and continued, this is what we speak, not in words taught us by human wisdom, but in words taught by the Spirit, explaining spiritual realities with Spirit taught words. And Paul was saying, this is good news for those people who are leading their groups. You know, sometimes we feel like we're limited in terms of how we, how we share the gospel, how we share the Bible, but, but Paul is encouraging these people. You know, it's not just the lack of knowledge that's our issue. Yes, that can be fixed by knowing God's word, by reading and studying God's word. But you know what? Because the spirit of God is with you, you have the power and the capacity to teach this even to children and to lost people. Do you know that this Bible can be taught to children? How among you here, you have kids. You have kids. Like six years old and below, seven years old below, maybe nine years old and below. You know, do you know that this the, the clarity of Scripture says that it, this can be preached and this can be taught to young people. If they can understand this, most probably you can also understand it. That's why we're doing campus ministry. That's why we're doing kids' church. Come on now. That's why we're doing this. That's why we're evangelizing. Because we understand the clarity of the Scripture is true. It can be understood by the power of of the Holy Spirit. And he continued this. The person without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit, of course. Nobody knows that, okay? You know, sometimes, who among you, you still uh, remember the moment that, remember the time when you were not yet uh, a Christian, okay? You read a verse, and then it says there, do not be equally yoked with an unbeliever. Hmm. I mean, parang you reject or flee from sexual immorality. Hmm. What is that? Or give your tithes and offering. Hmm. What is that, okay? But when your spirit was rejuvenated, when you received Christ as your Lord and Savior, now you understand it. Why? Because Paul is mentioning here, it comes from the Spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only and understand only through the Spirit. And this is what Paul is saying. Maybe the reason why we're not getting it now it's not because of the lack of time. It's not because of the lack of knowledge. It's not because of the lack of preaching that you hear. But maybe we have to hear and we have to open our hearts to the Holy Spirit who opens our minds and who opens our hearts to the knowledge and understanding of God's Word. And lastly, and I'll end with this thought, who has known the mind of the Lord so as to instruct Him, but we have the mind of Christ. My prayer is this, that whenever we read this word, we will pray to the Holy Spirit and say, God, can you just open my mind, open my heart, that I may have a mind of Christ. Not just to read this text, but to understand it. Because I want to hear 
from you. Last thought I want to share, and then we'll go to some practical thing. The, the clarity of the Bible gives us a, the understanding and appreciation of God's heart through His Word. The clarity of the Bible gives us the appreciation, the understanding and the appreciation. And I hope that whenever you go back to your quiet time, go back to your devotional time, there will be an increase of understanding. There will be an increase of appreciation. And there will be an increase of, ah, yun pala yon. Ah, that's it. That's what God has been telling me. That's what God has been directing me. That's, that's the will of God. And who among you, you've been praying for the will of God. You know what? It has been clearly written. His will is written here. You want to know God more? It's written here. It's clearly written here. And I pray that the Spirit of God will open up our minds and our hearts to His words. You know, Jesus did this to the the disciples who walk in the Emmaus Road, then he opened the minds so they could understand the scriptures. I would like to end with a practical thing, okay? When we go out of this room, go, go to your homes, I know you have your personal time, you have your personal space. My prayer is this, you will get a, a time and a space for you to read God's word. I pray that you will do that. I pray that you will do that. I'm not going to force you, but I pray that the Holy Spirit will remind you to do it. And that when you do it, I pray that you will ask the Holy Spirit to open up your heart and open up your mind. I have an acronym for open, okay? Para lang medyo maiba naman ang konti. Let us pray. We can pray. Letter O, occupy my mind. You know that sometimes whenever we read God's Word, we have a lot of distractions. We have a lot of worries. We have a lot of fears. Let's pray that, Lord, I pray that you will occupy my mind, not my worries, not my fears, not anything in this world, but I want to be occupied by your Spirit. That is actually a verse in John 15 that says, if you abide in my words, I will, I will abide in you and make you fruitful. Let it be, prepare my heart. Let us pray that God will prepare our hearts. And preparation of our heart means this, I haven't read it, Lord. I haven't read it. But Lord, prepare my heart to whatever you say. I just want to say my response is yes. I will obey. That's what it means to prepare our hearts. Whatever that is, Lord, we want to hear. I want to hear you. My answer is yes. Letter E is enlighten my eyes. Lord, enlighten our eyes. Enlighten my eyes as you go before you read God's word. You ask God, Lord, enlighten my eyes that I may see what you see so that I will do what you will say. Whenever we see what God sees, we will do what God says. And of course, lastly, nourish my soul, which is so important for us because many of us here, the reason why you want to read God's word is because you're asking for comfort. You're asking for strength. You're asking for something that will nourish you once again. You are hurt. You are sick. You are right now discouraged and you're needing the Word of God to nourish your soul. Before you read God's Word, pray that, O oh Lord, may you touch my innermost heart, my soul. I pray that you will touch me once again. And my prayer is this as we end. As David prayed this in the book of Psalms, open my eyes that I may see wonderful things in your law. Let's all stand up. I just want to pray for every one of us. Can we just slip up our hands right now? I just felt like blessing you. I, I just felt like, you know, when I was preparing this, you know, we, we keep on talking about the, the Spirit of God and I believe God, God's Spirit would want to fill you once again. And there's a lot of us here in this room you, you, you are crying to God because you understand that there are some parts in your life, there are some parts in your heart that you, you need the, the miracles of God. You need the Spirit of God. And the Holy Spirit would want to touch that right now. Lord Jesus, right now today as we raise up our hands, God, maybe some of us here, we're asking, God, can you just please heal me? God, can you just please remove my depression, Lord God? Can you just remove uh, the things that has been bothering me, the voices that has been bothering me today? 
Lord, today, right now, I pray for the infilling of your Holy Spirit right now. Infilling of the Holy Spirit. You said in your word that in the last days, you will pour out your Spirit, God. And today, God, I am asking, God, Lord, once again, illuminate your people, God, through your Spirit. Thank you, God, that this is your work for each and every one of us. Thank you, God, that, Lord, today, you are filling us anew. You are filling us once again, God. Lord, you are removing every worries. You're removing every doubts. You're removing every fears, God, today. And you're replacing it by the power of your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, guide us. And maybe tomorrow as we read God's Word, and maybe the day after that, for this week, when we open the Word of God, and as we pray to open up our hearts and to open up our minds, thank you. Father, you will speak to us clearly because you want to speak to us the things from your heart to our hearts. Lord, bless each and every one of us here, God, today. As we go out of this room, I pray that you will empower us to preach your word, to share your word, God, and to make a difference, God, because you have called us to be salt and light. In Jesus' name we pray. Everyone say, Amen. Amen.